So usually we like to do these overview videos as two minutes. This might take slightly longer. I'm being timed off screen here. Might take slightly longer because we're just going to explain really what the dashboard um, is there for and what we're trying to achieve um, in this sort of single pane of glass from a dashboard perspective. So I'll go through one by one. I think that's probably uh, the best way to do that. Um, on uh, the premium upgraded license, you've got the ability to turn the dashboard into a downloadable report. I won't go through and download the report, but you can see that's a nice PDF export that you can send on to colleagues, co-workers or clients. Uh, the first main board that we're greeted with here is just the, um, excuse me while it's all over the show, it's just the external vulnerability scanner itself. So what are the last IPs that have been scanned? What are the last domains that have been scanned? And what vulnerabilities have been picked up? Uh, from that. So you can obviously go into the external scanner and get some more da data there. Also tell you what's being scanned, what objects are enabled under your license as well, and confirming if the attack surface discovery and the attack surface mapper um, is enabled as well. Uh, very quickly, the attack surface discovery effectively just does reverse lookups on your IP address to see what domain names um, are attached to that, or if any domain names are attached to that. And the attack surface mapper is just a nice, neat little way uh, within the external scanner of showing you what your general attack surface is uh, in terms of ports and vulnerabilities websites uh, and ip addresses as such so uh, the vulnerability section these are the device vulnerabilities so you need to download an agent for that as you log into the software for the first time it will prompt you to actually do that so these effectively are the general vulnerabilities that are picked up it will show you most critical application worst cve worst server worst workstation and then you get a nice top five of a haul uh, quite often you find out who the usual suspects here are for from a, in terms of uh, vulnerabilities. So the next section is the Windows Defender straight third party AV. We're all managing environments now that have got a mixture between third party AV, Windows Defender, and maybe a bit of EDR from Sentinel One or CrowdStrike or even um, Defender for Endpoint, as I believe it's called at the moment. So this sort of section is trying to manage the Windows Defender estate. Um, in a penetration test, an internal one you need, or an audit, you need to demonstrate um, that your machines are both enabled and being updated. So here you can see the standard Windows Defender counters, but also the additional pieces like the anti-ransomware that's very good. We just don't know why Microsoft doesn't enable it by default. What open firewalls uh, that you have out there? Again, Defender sort of, it's called file, uh, Defender Firewalls now, or Firewalls for Defender. I, I forget what uh, the exact terminage, uh, terminology, but effectively that's where the firewall piece uh, for Windows Defender is managed. And then any threats that have been reported out by the Windows Defender work, stations uh, and then you'll get a top five here as well but as we can see uh, that's looking pretty clean so there's no data in there um, I already put a goodie in terms of Windows updates. So Windows updates um, for Windows 10 now, which most desktops have moved to, uh, they will update themselves because Microsoft has um, stopped waiting for users. It will just update when it wants to update, it seems. It's more for managing the servers and ensuring, you know, our general rule is make sure that you've got no more than two um, uh, security vulnerabilities out, uh, so updates, sorry, outstanding at any one time. But that gives you a nice element of the dashboard. Obviously, it all of these uh, have got more drill downs and you can click on this data for more drill downs. Um, the wind, the disk stroke, uh, the data stroke disk section is pretty much BitLocker. Um, so effectively, this is where you will understand what machines are not got, have not got BitLocker enabled. You can take a view on servers or workstations if they're locked in data centers or offices. It's the laptops that need to be encrypted. If you lose them on a train, especially here in the UK, uh, we have to report that. And sometimes our ICO, our Information Commissioner Office, I believe that's what it's stands for uh, will make you tell your clients as well so that is a fairly big deal um, and also we are understanding USB disks that are out there as well within the data and disk section there's a lot more around share and share permissions as well um, the office uh, so the, sorry the Azure 365 MFA page it, it sort of is as it sort of explains here it's what are your users that don't have multi-factor enabled we know that this is one of the easiest ways to hack someone now with phishing and there's a lot of ai and automated phishing that goes on where are your global administrators you'll see here as of uh, administrators that have got um uh, uh, elevated accounts assigned by ele underscore a person's name 
um, and also uh, the uh, so we don't want to we want to make sure that all global administrators um, do have MFA enabled and people are not using their primary account you need an elevated account that's how you pass a proper Microsoft audit for that um, and then we have here what guests are um, um, accessing your data this can be people sharing out SharePoint links or OneDrive links as well so quite often you're happy for people to not MFA to access your data but it is something that you should definitely keep track of as well uh, we have here uh, from a Windows hardware perspective what hardware you've got out there probably the security element here is do you have any operating systems uh, that are end of life I think on the desktops I think we're quite good these days um, because we've either got Windows 10 or above um, but certainly for servers there's quite a few older versions of server i think 2012 is now sort of um, um out of extended release and stuff like that so here's where you'd see if there's any end of life operating systems and then the agentless pieces you know this is coming down to uh, the internal penetration test test which is reconciled with a primary user store so what a audit, cyber audit or a, a penetration test wants to see is that you can reconcile with the primary user store like a zero active directory or active directory you know where all your machines are and are you tracking anti-malware antivirus are you tracking the updates available to that and are you tracking the third party vulnerabilities all stuff that which we know robo shadow does um, but here on this section it will show you what machines that you're not actually tracking now we'll just click on to this one as a click through um, it will here's where we've got the synchronization for those enable but it's basically saying what are your agentless machines these are the machines when they logged on to Active Directory and the ones that don't have Robo Shadow agents on. Usually, the remediation of this is just simply um, it's an issue within Intune or the RMM itself, just needs a little bit of a kick or a bit of a manual uh, help along, and that usually solves that problem. So, hopefully, um, that's a good, um, just a very quick overview of what we're trying to do in the dashboard. Uh, there is a lot of information there, but what we want people to be able to do, if you press Control Q, it will flick through your different clients if you've got multiple accounts in there as well, and it just allows you just to have a quick through. We're all used to scrolling because of our mobile phones these days, just allows you to quickly scroll through through look at the data and just see what's read what jumps out to you what do you what is going to be the best bang for your buck for yourselves or your teams uh, or even your service providers in terms of working on what is the next lot of cybersecurity challenges that you probably need to go and solve now so thank you ever so much for watching